Welcome to episode 25 of the Tipping 40s podcast. My name is Alex with Benson, Michael, and Ryan would rather spend time with his mom than do a podcast. <laughs> no, what an idiot. Mom. She yeah. needed to find out what a handsome young man he was. So uh, we missed last week because Michael had his wedding. So yeah, that's yes. why we weren't here. That People got good. drunk, yo. That's You're now good. married. Yeah. It's, so uh, so how many women have hit on you now that you wear a ring? Uh, none yet, but I'm sure it will be higher because it's like you know, women. Once the women can't have something, it annoys them really, really badly. So if they once they talk to me, though, they won't be interested anymore. <laughs> Mike Mike Love Doctor here. <laughs> Dot com. Dot com. Okay, so today we're, <laughs> we're going to do our uh, beer of the week, and uh, Benz is going to tell us who really wrote Shakespeare's plays. Not Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> Mike is going to do uh, some student loan check because he loves student loans. I do. Yes, I'll, he does. I'll be talking about Halloween, and then uh, we'll do our movie picks, but not really because Ryan's not here, so we'll just talk about movies. And then top five most wanted, of course. So you can send us an email telling us how much we suck at podcast.tipping40s.com. Yeah, and we actually got a few. Um, Wait, or we can leave us a voicemail. I'm oh, sorry. Tell us how fucking smart we are. 218-666-8407. They have to actually do yes. the specific one. To if you're pissed, ask. send an email if you, if you like. Yeah, because then we can, we can just not. If you're pooping on me, I want to listen to you. <laughs> so we got a few emails. Uh, Sean Riley wrote in um, that in overrated movies, he feels that Sis and Kane should be maybe on that list even though How, the number one movie almost always has to be said, overrated because it can't be any higher so yeah, i mean that I'm, is kind of true i understand that it is revolutionary for lighting and whatever but to orient people who don't give a shit about the history of filmmaking and haven't been to film school i.e myself it drags the story is bone dry as you as you can get i don't care about any of the characters or their others aside from kane and it is horribly dated um it's a whole, it's a whole, I still think it's, it's a good movie. It's I, time. I like it's watching. Amazing. I like watching Citizen yeah. Kane, but I've heard other people say these same things about it, and I can never really argue with it. It's not really not true. It's the, just it's it doesn't age. The as character is well a device for the plot. Quote. Yeah, yeah, and that's the problem with it. That's I true. guess. But before it's time, it's like. I mean, like Citizen Kane is something where you could talk for days about that movie. I mean, there's this because there's so much lore surrounding it and how important it was, but then it's like. Whatever. Yeah, yeah sure. like Avatar. I don't, I don't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so important. So, uh, Steve Langford, we really can't talk about this because it's a video, but he, he, maybe we'll post it in the show notes. He sent us uh, this thing, I think it has to relate with our Let's Play Alien Conspiracy Theory discussions, but uh, he sent us a YouTube video of a guy going like, oh, it's a UFO, and uh, it turns out it's just the moon. <laughs> so, this is a pretty great video. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even really a UFO anymore because it's not flying. It's just yeah up there. Well, it's also, also it's not, identifiable. It's, ident- it's in <laughs> yes. it's an I O yeah identified identifiable object input output <laughs> or or, <laughs> output. or it's it's M for moon <laughs> uh, dial M for moon. That's actually the new uh, book by uh, what's her name? Joe Colver. Okay, okay, whatever. Yeah, I know what you're talking about whatever. So, uh, uh, is that it? You got another one? One more. Uh, this one's actually pretty interesting. Miles McRae. Greetings from Australia, uh, where the early symptoms of Jeff Dunham are apparently set, setting in. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Probably best to quarantine the entire planet now. <laughs> he also congratulated me. He, he attached uh, an ad for Jeff Dunham. It looks like a toy. No, it's a DVD. I'm sorry. So, the DVD is... Uh, is a hit in Australia, oh. which isn't surprising because Australia is basically the dumb part of the United States. <laughs> it's like ultra conservative, so it's uh, that well, makes sense. Their government, is. there is, yeah. yeah, their people are like heavily censored and actually hate that shit. Oh yeah, yeah. but uh, so I feel bad for Australians actually because most of the Australians I've ever yeah, talked to are usually pretty smart, but then they yeah, always talk too. about I- how much they hate. But their government's not. Massive yeah. censorship. Yeah. yeah. Well, this... hey, you can't have triple A sized boobs or child pornography. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that one's that's it's still a law somehow. Um, anyway, all right. So on to beer of the week, Vegemite. This week we have a true forty steel reserve, eight percent beer. Yep. Malt liquor, as commonly known. It's high gravity. 40s. This. 
thing doesn't still reserve tastes like shit. In yeah, a 40, it's motor oil. It's fucking gross. But yesterday, I had it in a can for the first time. I gotta say, not so bad in a can. Yeah, I don't understand. It's the only, it's the only beer where it's the other Rubers, way around. Yeah. Well, that's a testament to its yes, quality. Yeah, <laughs> it totally is. It's like aluminum. So if you drink, taste a, helps if, you drink yeah. a 40, if you drink a forty of steel, you're pretty much drinking two forties. So yes, pretty watch awesome. out. Yes, it's, it's like what eight point one four bucks or something. No, it's well, it's two fifty for one oh usually. God. Two two twenty to two fifty. Not that I buy these often and just know that off the top of my head, but I think that's your most not anymore. Forty, not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. You used to though. Yeah, I remember those days. Yeah, those were good times. We're old now. Steel. <laughs> All right. So now uh, Kevin's going to talk about Shakespeare. Fancy. All right. So let's let's have some Shakespeare chat up in here. Uh, what do you guys think of Shakespeare? Uh, I I personally I loved uh, Annie Oakley. Get your gun. Can you get your gun? That's what good. do you think of Shakespeare? I, I, <laughs> I think Shakespeare, I like how he, for his time, no one was writing stuff like he was. So I like how he always has like super hidden messages in his plays and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And like weird puns and stuff too. Yes. It's very yeah. different than any type of writing at that time. Completely different. So I, I love Very how, original. I love how disgusting he made sex sound. Like he did. Beast with two backs. It's like, I don't ever want to have sex again. He did a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. In his, he was he was he was a very good playwright, but but we're moving beyond that. I'm gonna talk about now. First, it's the the segment's about Shakespeare, but it's kind of about how the, he was in love. Yeah, no, it's not about that because that movie's terrible. Um, Oscars, what are you talking about? So, first off, <laughs> let's talk about Shakespeare a little bit. You know, he was born in the mid 1500s. He died in the early 1600s. Uh, he wrote about 38 plays give or take, depending on uh, if um, some of the collaborative ones were him or not, which are kind of like inconclusive, basically. Mm-hmm. But uh, And he wrote a lot of sonnets and other shit like that, but who cares about that? I only, I only care about plays. Mm-hmm. That's what's important. And, uh, you know, a lot of his stuff, like most people at the time, was collaboratively written. So it wasn't just him. Like, a lot of his stuff, especially at the beginning and end of his career, were co-written by him and other people and so like he had a lot of people that he worked with and uh i actually wasn't aware of this this is one thing that i actually found out when i was like doing this segment that he's a man he he was a man that's true uh he wasn't popular really until the 1800s he was just considered a good playwright well he always had a job at the globe theater though and stuff right i mean well he pretty much he pretty much was like king of the globe theater but i'm saying place for like but Fucking he, poor people, and it wasn't just for like the high ups and stuff like that. So, well, well, yes, but beyond that, though, the what I'm saying is that he was always considered a good playwright, and everyone kind of liked him and respected him, mm-hmm. especially even when he was alive, into after he died. But it wasn't until the 1800s that people started to pick up his plays and consider him to be one of like probably the greatest playwright of all oh, time. Oh, I got you. Like he, it, it happened much like long, long after. I always had the impression that when he died, people were like. Ah, you know, they thought he was like the best, yeah. but it's not. Actually, that's not how it was. But it makes sense, though, that would start happening in eighteen hundreds because the Victorian, Victorian culture. Era. That's yeah. why it was the Victorians that actually picked it back up. Yeah, it yeah. totally makes sense. And um, and now, obviously, he's the most famous of all time, like by a wide margin. But but at the time, he really, you know, what about he, rent? He, fuck rent. <laughs> um, so anyway, as you probably know, Roland Emmerich's new movie. Anonymous. He makes good movies. They're yeah. always historically well, accurate. That's, yeah. that's what I'm going to talk Saber about. Tooth. that. I'm going to talk about that. Okay, so the movie appears. claims that Shakespeare didn't write Shakespeare and instead written by uh, the, uh, what was it, the, the Duke, Duke of Oxford. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Um, I forget his name, but I probably should have wrote Duke, that down. Isn't it Duncan something Duncan? Duke Duncan. No, you're thinking of the Highlander. Sounds like a porn star. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but basically... Uh, the guy, there's, there's, the funny thing is though, I, I, after reading a little bit about it, this isn't like, he, he's saying, like, he actually is saying, not, not just as a movie, like, hypothetically, he's saying that Shakespeare didn't write his plays. Like, Roland Emmerich's like, right. I believe this. And a lot of other people have been like, a green Does the movie say that, or does he say that? I, I, the movie I, and him. I just want to oh. say, the guy who directed Eight Legged Freaks thinks <laughs> this. Uh, yeah, well, you know, he's known for, he's known for factually accurate movies, like, 2012. 
Whoa. Oh, yeah, you meant that too. Yeah. Well, oh. I was going to talk about that. Not only that, though. Here's the thing about Roland Emmerich, and and this is what I was saying. I think Roland Emmerich makes bad movies. That's obviously. I think we all think that. Mm-hmm. But the one thing that I will say about him, I don't think he's stupid. I do not think he's stupid. I think he's actually pretty smart. I don't know, because, man. Because no, no, I think he is. You know why? Because he makes movies that are controversial a lot of the time, like 2012. Yeah. Where you go, Oh, all these people think that the world's going to end in 2012. There's no controversy in my mind, so... <laughs> well, it's, there's not in your mind, yeah. but a lot of... Here's what I'm saying. The reason is, though, is he makes movies like this. He also made 10,000 BC, which is just like... That was a bad decision. Yeah, Toy cool. right now. That, that well, Prehistoric but, dinosaur birds. <laughs> CG animals. The killer movie. ostriches. Yeah. Just, but, um, <laughs> but he, awful. you know, obviously he makes movies that are completely inaccurate, but that's like, you know... Who cares? A lot of people do that. I mean, look at Inglorious Bastards. That movie's about as inaccurate as it gets. But, but it's entertaining. Yeah. Uh, Roland Emmerich's movies suck. But the point is that the point I'm making is that I don't think he believes that Shakespeare didn't write his plays. Uh, I don't just, think you, he be- you think he's using that as a marketing ploy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think he's making <laughs> that up to say because what happens is, and this this happened now. This anonymous movie apparently hasn't been doing that well. No, what well, you were telling me, which is funny. I, I thought it would actually do pretty well. Honestly, I didn't. I, I yeah, thought it I, might. I didn't see much ads for it either. So, it was like, well, that's true. It wasn't really marketed that heavily. But what I can say though is that um, I, I think that he's making it up because he like whenever something like this comes out, especially a movie that's kind of like downplay, like it's it's like this is making a statement about Shakespeare, and it's always something that's kind of. Like, it doesn't affect you in your everyday life, just like 2012. Mm -hmm. But it's something where all these news anchors will talk about the movie for, like, two seconds. And they always go, well, I think that maybe he didn't. Because it seems really convincing. And they always say stuff like that. Like these, Back to cats on treadmill. Yeah, exactly. These people, <laughs> these people who spend all their day reading from a card, and then suddenly they have opinions that are valid to tell me like about history. <laughs> so, But this is, th- this is what happens every time one of these movies comes out. And I think he was totally just playing it up. I don't think that he really thinks that. It, Pulling a Larry yeah. the Cable Guy. Yeah, exactly. He's just bullshit. He's bullshitting. Um, now, I'm going to go beyond that and just talk for like a couple minutes before I end this. And say, one, Shakespeare wrote his own plays. He did. There's, there's so much more factual evidence uh, that he did than the people who are called anti-Stratfordians are the people who oh. think he didn't. Because he was born in Stratford upon right. Avon. It's a stupid name. But uh, if you want to learn more about that, you can go to ShakespeareAuthorship, all one word, dot com. And uh, they, they have way more information than I could tell you here anyway. But... Um, there's a few little arguments that people make. One, he couldn't have had the education necessary to write the plays. Well, that is so that's insulting. Bullshit. That is, it that is, is stupid. so stupid. That's a bit, that's the number people one too. That's the number one argument. That is, that is the Come stupidest on. argument oh I've ever heard. It's very yeah, insulting. So uh, yeah. Galileo didn't have you know the uh, education to <laughs> figure out anything new at all. Yeah. And then uh, that's so stupid. There's also that there's not a strong historical record of his life up to that point, which is actually kind of false that, and kind of true. It's kind of true. Um, yeah. The reason is because there's not solid the education thing. The reason is there's not a solid um, his like record of students in the schools that they thought he went. There was one school, the King's School or whatever it's called, that he supposedly went to, and there's not an actual student record, so they can't tell whether he. Where's really the birth certificate? <laughs> yeah, that's all that is, basically. Um, there's another one that I think is really funny, which is that they think a nobleman wrote it, and that, but at the time, they said writing as, as a nobleman, you're not supposed to write stuff because that's like considered like kind of lower class than you. So like by writing you, it, it trivializes your position as a nobleman mm-hmm. or whatever, which, by the way, uh, several members of the monarchy had published poetry at that same so, time. Yeah. Do these so these people think bullshit. Bullshit. Do these people think that uh, Shakespeare just straight up fucking stole it from these guys from Duke they think, man? They think that either a nobleman wrote it and then published it under his name, which he uh, which he just accepted. Like they basically oh, okay. paid him to take the mm-hmm. work and publish it. Um, and or that uh, something similar to that, like he ended up getting credited for stuff incorrectly. Um, but most of them think that someone gave it to him to publish, and that they didn't. He didn't actually write it. 
Um, so there's another one that where he signed his name on a, on documents where he actually signed his name. It's he spelled it differently than how he's his name is commonly known and credited as a writer. Who gives a shit? That yeah, he could have he could have done that just as you can just read for the shit of, you know. I, can, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and then well, he wrote it like with a dash in the oh, middle okay. and stuff. So it's it's different, but it's still like whatever. And then. But the, my favorite, though, is that he passed down a will to his daughter, like, when he died. And the will was, they complained because it wasn't written in Shakespearean style. Because wow. it, was written, it wasn't written in fancy prose. Because it's a will! <laughs> it's a will! Who writes that? What, are you going to write, like, an essay in the middle of your will so no one knows what to give people? Like, what are you talking about? When I part with my eternal body. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. And then, you shall get so, my back home. Anyway, that and there's also the massive evidence that he wrote of me just because all these other people that were alive at the same time credited him all the time for them, and he acted in his own plays in the Globe Theater yeah, all well, the time. So he was there. It's not like he just wasn't there at all. Just eating sandwiches. But <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Were, actually, who created those too? Yeah, that's that Ooh. was the, well, that was the Earl of Sandwich. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was, maybe it was uh, this dude too. Sandwiches were sandwiches. around before that. I mean, who, who, how could they possibly not put bread and meat together? <laughs> I can't. That's all possible. They were separate. <laughs> they were just separate. Um, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna close it out here because we're getting we're getting up on time. But the only thing I want to say about it, just to say at the end of it, this is if you go into Google and you put "Did Shakespeare." And let the autocomplete finish it. <laughs> oh, of course. You can guess what it says. It says, did Shakespeare exist? No. I thought it would be to write his own plays. No. People, there are people that actually believe Shakespeare was not a person. He's Dude, from like 400 years ago. I love typing ago. those autocomplete things and They're pretty funny. He died 400 years ago and they think he's not a person. <laughs> I'm done. God damn it. Shakespeare, you poor guy. Bill Shakespeare. <laughs> All right, Mike, student loans. I'm depressed now. Um, yeah, I know, right? Time to get more depressed, I'm sure. So, yeah. over the last week, I was pretty busy at work and with wedding stuff, so I wasn't reading the news very much. Um, however, I got home one day, and I get this email from my mom. It was like in the middle of the week. And, and she's a staunch Republican, even though she owns a small business, so that, mean, that doesn't make any sense, but whatever. <laughs> um but her email was labeled, looks like Obama is going to help people with their student loans. And it was an email that had a link to a Yahoo News article that talked about how Obama had this new student loan plan. So I'm instantly skeptical. Like, yeah. I just don't believe this. So I read through the article and then the White House press release, which fortunately was linked to it. So that was the official thing. And uh, I found out the following. Um, first... They plan to structure payments so that they do not exceed 10% of an individual's personal income. And I'll, at first I thought this meant garnishments. This is not garnishments. This is how you actually pay back the loan. The okay. second one, and that, that's fine, whatever. Right now it's 15%, but they want to lower it to 10 um, They are allowing consolidation to eligible quote-unquote borrowers to a single loan for convenience purposes. Oh, they said with this deep- No. Oh. They didn't. Of course not. <laughs> Fuck you. But they tell you some things, which I will get into at the end of my article. But they don't tell you. They don't tell you actually like your financial situation. Those things. What 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 situation do you need to be in to consolidate? Right. But here's the interesting one, and I just figured this out today. After 20 years of payments, if you've not gone into default, the remaining principal amount owed will be forgiven. It will just go away. What? Yeah. That. Now, that sounds great. Yes, right? it does. But <laughs> I'm doing a I will, pump right now. I read two other things that were not so good, and I'm not going to say them yet. So I'm, <laughs> I read these other things, and I thought, oh, so he really isn't doing anything to ease the debt burden. He's just stretching it out. You know, he's not changing your interest rate. He's not lowering your principal, really. So I wrote back to my mom that because of this and other reasons, the other reasons I'll get into later, that this is bullshit political move by the Obama administration, probably to show the Occupy Wall Street crowd that they're still on his side. Like, they, oh, we're, we're, we're good together. Yeah. Um, 
My mom was like, that's too bad. But because it was a forward, I saw all these other responses. And every one of them fell into two categories. Uh, One was, way to go, Obama. Let's see the Republicans do that. To more handouts for the young generation. So it's just like two (laughs) sections. More handouts. And I thought, did people even read the article? And then I no, read, why okay. would they? And then I wondered, you? did journalists read the newsletter? <laughs> I was like, huh. I mean, sure, they grabbed the talking points, but did they actually analyze what the plan actually does? So I decided to go to the U.S. major news outlets, MSNBC, Fox News, and CNN, to see how this was covered. So first off, there were no videos on MSNBC. Maybe there was, but that site is such a piece of shit. Do not use MSNBC. <laughs> they it is suck. a horrible Horrible site. They're really bad. It, it looks maybe nicer than Fox News, but it's completely unusable. It's yeah, horrible. The, the navigation is horrible. I've never but been there so I was able, I was able to find an article uh, posting performing almost a FAQ an FAQ on uh, the Obama plan. The fact is, of course, a total softball, um, and it provides zero criticism to the plan at all. There's none. I'll have the link in the show notes. This, but was this on MSNBC? Yeah, it was. Oh an well, article. I'm surprised. Yeah. That. It goes through all of the talking points, like it doesn't cost a dime to taxpayers to uh, how much people will save on their monthly payments. <laughs> um, so I thought, well, this didn't go over my concerns, so I'll go to CNN. Now, <laughs> CNN did not go over my big issues with the bill, but I will say it was one of the best pieces of journalism I've seen them do in months. It was, they actually asked legitimate questions and the i actually do have clips here because i can actually find things on cnn um this is a interview between a cnn correspondent and i wish i got her name and secretary of education arnie duncan so obviously he's on here to sell his plan and here's his pitch how will these changes that the president is proposing help this is a big deal basically what we're doing and we're just going to do this by ourselves we can't we're wait do for by ourselves. we're just going to act is we're going to reduce those monthly payments, um, depending on the individual, by uh, as much as a couple hundred dollars. So if we can reduce those monthly payments, we'll reduce defaults, we'll strengthen the economy. Okay, so they'll reduce defaults, strength, whatever. So he's right. loving the plan. But fortunately, the correspondent asks a pretty logical question about one of those three things I mentioned earlier, uh, specifically the forgiveness aspect of the plan. So here's, here's her asking a good question. Why would you ever choose to pay off all of the debt if the debt will eventually be forgiven well, well, well people want to do the right thing we want to encourage them to do this this is really about reducing that debt so i just wanted to he point didn't out answer that at all th- this is classic redirection and despite the correspondent trying her best he just completely won he just completely avoided the question i want to do like, the right you. thing and give student loan companies more money yeah, yeah, more money when they keep getting bailed out yeah well that's for true too mismanaging their money that we're paying them that they don't That's deserve. what Spike Lee's new Do the Right Thing movie is about. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I want to say that she's actually bringing up a good point, is that all the time governors do this. They stick something way out in the future and go, well, if we hit a huge budget shortfall because of this influx of principal student loan debt that's forgiven, it won't be on my fucking time. It'll be 20 years down the road to this fucker. Who cares right. about him? You know, it's it's just totally kicking the can down the road and just giving it to some slut. Some yeah. some president twenty down the, years down the road is going to suddenly have this like like this eighty billion dollar shortfall probably, and he's going to be like, "What the hell?" And then this <laughs> going to exist every year after that. So Obama's being kind of a dick, setting it up this way. Do he should just think, do it up front. Do you think this is actually going to last? It's already pa- he doesn't. Okay, I didn't. I was going to talk about this, but basically, this was already passed by both Republicans and Democrats to go into effect in 2014. But Obama tried to push it up because he wants to get the Occupy Wall Street people on what his is side. It, is he just lampshading it then, or what? No, he, well, once a bill's passed, he can speed it up if he wants under certain conditions. And well, this is well I'm saying, like, he's, is, he, is he trying to, like, just turn it around and take credit for something that already existed, or...? It's not... It, <coughs> it, 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 it does exist, but it, doesn't, it wasn't supposed to be enacted until 2014. I see. Now he's moving it up. He's kind of muscling it in. And you even heard Arnie Duncan going, we're not having this in one. We're strong arming it. You know, trying to sound yeah, tough. Of course. Um, but it's all bullshit. Like, it, it, anyways, yeah, it's, it's a bill that was already passed. They're just speeding it up now. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, you know, and the nice thing about the correspondent is she goes on 
and sees that this won't really fix the sy systemic issues in the U.S. collegiate system. So she follows up with this gem, and really, you got to listen to Arnie Duncan's response to this. This is incredible. All right. Of course, the, the biggest problem here is the cost of a college education. It just keeps going up. It increased, again, what, Christine is my, my encyclopedia of, of, of consumer knowledge. What, call no, it? Another 5 or 8 percent, depending on where it's you 8%. go. 8 percent. Another 5 to 8 percent. That, that's crazy. Is there anything, anything that the government can do to try to control the cost of a college education? Well, I don't know if we can control the cost. Which <laughs> what? <laughs> what? So he just basically told her, no, fuck you. Yeah. Um, they have no plan on how they're actually going to fix that problem, which, so, you're, just, you're not actually fixing anything. So their plan is just to ruin someone's life, but make it so that they can recover way, way later, maybe. Yeah, th this like, is a band-aid. All, all the colleges and universities don't even fucking give a shit about that. Really so no, yeah. they don't. Who cares? Oh, and, yeah. They... And it's sad, but in a way, and Bachman kind of says this, and she is nuts, but... It is kind of true. When you put money into a system, it raises prices. So when you give guaranteed loans out, the schools are like, well, shit, I'll just charge more. So it's unfortunate. You need those loans to exist, but these colleges are shitty, and they just go, well, the money's there, so I'm going to charge more. And they build huge libraries and all the shit that they don't need. Right. You know, the stadiums and such. So anyways, while this was insightful, it didn't point out the two biggest issues in this bill, which I haven't said yet. So I figured Fox News would be all over this, right? They'd go after Obama and straighten the Republican stance. Well, first off, they played this clip of Obama. And I understand why the, the more liberal places didn't play this, because this is so stupid. But th th this is Obama talking to a bunch of students at the University of Denver. And because you'll have some certainty, knowing that it's only a certain percentage of your income that is going to pay off your student loans, we... That means you will be more confident and comfortable to buy a house or save for retirement. And that will give our economy a boost at a time when it desperately needs it. Saving so, for retirement. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking yeah. of right out of school. Yeah. So what, we, what we'll hope is that when you can supplement your debt burden by buying a fancy new house that isn't worth shit. That <laughs> yeah. will help my friends. I mean, the economy. Yeah, no kidding. Dude, what, what is he talking? Oh, okay. This debt's bad. So stupid. So... What we're going to do is we're going to lower your debt so that you can buy a house. So yeah. stupid. The stoop, oh, my God. So terrible. So you think the Republicans would just be jumping all over this with all sorts of great counterpoints. No, because it's such a stupid idea. No, but they want people to buy houses. Well, yeah. So, so they wouldn't say that. So here's a fiscal hawk. I'm going to use the, the phrase that people call this guy. U.S. Representative Republican Paul Ryan on the plan. And so now this is all on the government's books. Taxpayers are liable for all these loans if they go bad, and it takes away choice and competition in the student loan market for students. All that choice. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to point out something. Paul Ryan is completely lying. This isn't even half truth. He, he is flat out lying because federal loans are given out since 2010, at least 2010, by the Department of Education. We're already on the hook. Whether this stupid plan exists or not, we're paying what, when people go into default, we're paying for it anyways. It's right. through the U.S. government. So this has nothing to do with that. And actually, on top of that, we also are on the hook for all the Sally Mae loans, which are private because it's federally subsidized. So he's just making shit up. That's not even true. <laughs> this plan, it, it, he's kind of going like, this plan will do this. No, we already are doing that. It's too late. Right. And, you know, he probably helped pass it. So it doesn't even matter. Um, so no one's going to point out my issues. But fortunately, Fox News took this wonderful poll, and this really doesn't have anything to do with it. And this is one of the most incredible polls I've seen in a while. So play the last clip. That's not sitting well with a lot of Americans out there. According to a brand new Rasmussen Reports poll, 66% oppose this idea. They say students should pay back what they owe. What kind of lesson is that for students if they don't have to eventually pay back what they borrowed? Okay, so 66%, that's not even close, right? That's a, right. That's not even yeah, close. that's a blowout, yeah. right? Well... You, can, you can't see it in the podcast, but the question they asked to get their opinion was maybe a little obtuse, a little strange. This is the verbatim poll question they put up on the screen. Should the government forgive nearly $1 trillion in student loans? <laughs> <laughs> how, how was that not higher than 66? I don't... Uh, what? <laughs> this, 
I don't, I don't even understand how that could possibly be allowed. It is so insane. It is that not shit, even that close. That shit pisses me off so much. This is it's why not I don't even read the close. news as much as you guys. So. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, you know, it's just like, it's beside the fact that they're saying like, why do these students pay back what they owe? But the fact is that if you're stuck... You're paying back way, 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 way more than what you owe. Yeah, that's true. Because these interest rates destroy you. Mm-hmm. I mean, your debt will rise. Like, Which massively. this plan doesn't address at all. Yeah. But no. Also, the economy, is, like, the economy is great for graduating from college right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you exactly. buy the house. <laughs> buy, buy the house. Save for retirement this with all that extra dollars you have. Save for retirement. Have. This is seriously the only time I've ever seen since I was a kid. And obviously, it hasn't been that long. But, you know, it's 20 years since I was really young. And I've never seen a time until now where a lot of people, including like some economists and stuff like that, say maybe you shouldn't go to college. Yeah, it's, I've it's never finally, seen that before. It's incredible. It's the first time in my life that I've seen people not be able to get a job for two years out of school, and they're working at like you know at yep. a server, and they're looking, and they don't find it. I mean, I've never seen that. Yeah, it's never happened. Um, yep. You work with people who. Don't have degrees making more money than you. And yeah, it's like, well, that, I have all this fucking money. It's like, God damn. That's it too. Yeah. And that, the thing is, though, that one, everyone went to college now, and the people yeah. who didn't, they spent those two years. Let's say the four years that you were in college, they spent those two years looking for a job. They got one, and they moved up by the time you were already they getting made hired. Money while I paid money. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, depending on where you go, you might not learn as much as you could somewhere else. So yeah, yeah. that's that's another issue. Yeah. yeah. Now <laughs> I wish that this poll was true. I wish that that was the plan. Pay just pay off all the debt for <laughs> everybody. That would be great. But uh, <laughs> it's it's obviously not. That no. would never happen. It's impossible. Um, so it's total bullshit. So no one got the award for the two biggest problems of the plan. So I'm gonna go over them. These are. In, they're right in the newsletter. And I'll, I'm going to tell you, I had to do a lot of research for this fucking piece because when I worked in student loans. I did. I worked in that field uh, selling college. And they have completely changed it. Okay. Yeah. In 2010, it's completely different. Now, here's the good thing about it. Now, all the loans are Stafford and fixed. Right. But that doesn't help us because we didn't go to school in 2010. Yeah. We didn't start school in 2010, so it doesn't help, help us at all. So this kind of goes into that same vein of like, well, this generation's just fucked. From 2000 to like 2010, if you went to college during that time, you're like a lost generation. You're going to have way more debt than everyone else, and that's just how it is. Um, here are the two things that I think from the bill that, that prove this. You must have taken your first loan out in 2008. To okay. be eligible. So, what do you mean? So, you, you had to be a freshman in 2008. Oh, okay. For this to apply. I so, see. you or me, this bill does not affect us at all. Right. Sweet. Of course, not a single article I read pointed this out. Yeah. None of them. So, that whole trillion dollar thing is this complete lie, too. Yeah. Well, th- yeah, that's, that Ross that's Newsom poll is even more insane. That's so. talking about debt that, that's not even being forgiven. No. It's not there. Yeah. And here, also, well, there's another thing, too. If you're paying for 20 years and the average debt is around $24,000, most people are going to pay away more than $24,000 after 20 years. Yeah. If, oh, you yeah. Have to, if you're being forced to pay 10% of your income, you're going to pay more. So right. that's the other thing they don't tell you. But anyways, um, this is the other big thing. This is only effective for federal student loans. Oh, oh okay. That's cool. Oh. So no private... Yeah, well, because Whoa. no one has private loans. No now one said anything in about that because they don't. They're not really needed anymore because there's there's more Stafford loans available. But back <laughs> no for us, said, there wow. wasn't. Yeah, yeah, they didn't. No, no they, one said anything so about that. So we not cannot consolidate. Close. We can't do anything with it. We're stuck with adjustable rate private loans, and and here's the worst part: this is only going to affect. We have a trillion plus dollars of student mm-hmm. loan debt out there. Um, this is only going to affect about two hundred fifty billion of it. Okay. Around there, so, and that's only if you're eligible, by the way, because that's only part of it. They, they don't tell you all the financial eligibility things in the newsletter. So, yeah. So, we're only dealing with a small percentage of the problem. And but they're acting like it's 
well, of course going to take care of it, even though it's not also, really doing anything. I will say, that whoever wrote this newsletter is a PR genius. It, it is so yeah. filled with like these these half truths and like vague statements. It is horrible <laughs> to read. I mean, it is it is just they they do not. They, they should say somewhere in that that newsletter, this does not affect private loans, but they don't because they go, well, there's not really private loans anymore anyway, so who cares? But they they don't think about well, that's you know, prior to 2010 was only a couple of years ago. It's not that long ago. Majority of students are going to have loans that are older than that. Yeah. So, yeah, th- this plan's bullshit. And if if people like jump on the bandwagon and applaud Obama for it. You're doing the wrong thing. You should be, you should be extremely critical of this plan. I'd rather have it not exist than have this plan. I don't think it's a good plan. I think it's just going to put people in more debt. They're going to end up paying more towards their principal than they would have if they just paid out of their ass the whole time, mm-hmm. you know, and just got fees charged to them. Because all the people that they're covering are just individuals that are on federal only loans anyways and those loans aren't the bad ones it's the private ones yeah so that's that's my opinion on the student loan plan but you can send in your own opinions at podcast at tipping my opinion is fuck them yeah also know about loans also rasmussen you are the worst polling company in the <laughs> Dude, entire that's, world that that's, thing that's is bullshit the, talk about payola right there <laughs> Just taking, just taking the money for those, for those polls. It's, it's almost like, it's almost like with the Euro bailout going like, like Germany refusing the bailout and going like, are you okay that Germans believe in Hitler now? It's like, <laughs> uh, what? Well, yeah, I'm, they don't, they believe in individuals. I'm not okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> it's like, what? All right. I'm going to talk about the best holiday known as Halloween. Halloween. Happy. Happy. Halloween's an amazing <laughs> holiday, both as an adult and as a kid. It's definitely number one holiday as an adult, and it's pretty pretty high up there as a kid. It's pretty good. Yeah, so uh, I agree. Uh, See, he doesn't agree. He's no, not a Halloween. You know, well, I'll tell you why he doesn't agree. Because he doesn't like gummy candy. That's why. No problem <laughs> sure. with candy. So let's first first talk about how great it is as an adult. So I, I got like some bullet points here and stuff. So number one, Halloween is all about your friends and not your family. Not that, many, not many holidays. Nah, that's actually very. Are cool. like that, so I you like know that so much on family holidays. You got to go out there. You got to buy stuff for people or call them up and talk. Hey, yeah, how's how are you doing with this? Oh, yeah, how's how's the weather going there? Like, Fuck that! I don't fucking care about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> if I ask you, oh, happy birthday! How, what are you doing? That's about it. I don't I don't want to talk about other shit. So Halloween is also you know you get, go to parties, meet that strangers. Is fine. You're just random people that are just dressed up and weird strangers all over the place. Yeah. That's, that's the number one best part about it. Just no family. Number two, <laughs> number two part, parties and alcohol. Yeah. That's pretty there's, awesome. There's a lot of holidays that are alcohol intensive, but this is a pretty good one. It's pretty high up there. Yeah. It, my family's filled with alcohol, so every holiday is alcohol related. If I'm well, the only, the only other one that's massively alcohol related, unless you count Christmas St. Eve, because a lot of people... Are, you know, St. Patrick's Day. Actually, that's true, too. I didn't think about that one. But New Year's Eve is... Dude, 4th yeah. of July, too, is pretty... Really? New Year's Eve is not beer intensive. Yeah, Or is. not New Year's, sorry. 4th of July is beer yeah. intensive. It's like... You drink a lot of beer on that. So, so far, we got beer. no family, alcohol. Pretty good time so far. Number three, costumes. Yeah. So, uh... Yes. Those for some right. reason, dressed up in some stupid outfit is okay. And usually pretty fun. I don't know why. But, uh... Probably because of the alcohol. But um, <laughs> well, that helps. Co- costumes on Halloween—it's it's different for men and women, though, and this is what makes Halloween amazing. So this is the only day that it's socially acceptable. I know where this is going for women to dress in the sluttiest, most revealing outfits yep. possible, and they fucking love it. Yes. They do love it, and they, they also try to like battle other women to be the most slutty one possible. And guys, they just try to wear something funny. That's it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, some guys will want to show off their muscles, though, too. Oh, yeah some, yeah, some guys. But those guys usually have lame costumes. No one they cares do. about them, yeah. usually. You remember when 300 came out? That was terrible. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a lot of Spartans A lot of people dressed as Spartans. One of my roommates went as a Spartan. Yeah, really? just so you, just so you guys know, we live uh, in Tempe, and we live close to Mill Avenue, where it's a 
Really, really big Halloween thing there. Yeah. So yes. We get to see a lot of I kind of hate going to Mill on Halloween. I, I love absolutely it. love it's it. It's fucking awesome. I love it, man. We're, going, we're, going, we're going tonight. We're going tonight as well, a... Well, tonight is Saturday. So. We're going as a weekend at Bernie's crew. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be great. Benson's going to be Bernie. I am. I'm going to carry him around, push him around. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, back to, back to what I was talking about. Um, and then number four... Halloween, let's see, what did I write? Halloween for adults is completely separate than what it is for kids. So, you know, that's, there's no holidays like that. Where that's true. For kids and adults, it's, like, it's a separate holiday. Well, most Halloween parties are a different unless day. Unless you have kids. Unless you have kids. But that, that's another thing I was going to say. Okay. On the actual night of Halloween, it's st- it could still be fun for adults. Like, when I was too old, you know, go cr- trick-or-treating and shit, with, I would hang out with my dad and just scare the shit out of kids. Because I used to live in the neighborhood that everyone yeah. would go to. There'd mm-hmm. be... Piles of kids in the streets who just, you know, sit in a fucking chair with a mask on, like a, and a bowl sitting in your fucking belly, just sitting there with a cane. And the kids are too afraid to grab it. Just scare the shit out of anyone. It's, it's actually, that's also fun. So, it's a great holiday, man. I fucking love it. Now, it as, now as a kid, candy, 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 candy. That does, that's all that matters. Oh, yeah, you get a shit you go, you go around, and I used to get entire pillowcases of candy every single year a full fucking pillowcase i, I, I got we, we gotta talk about this for a second though because that shit don't exist in a lot of cities now because that's of stranger danger bullshit yeah that's what i was you're gonna right. say i mean i don't understand how this holiday exists though i mean if you're a parent it's like this is the worst fucking holiday of my life yeah <laughs> kids are gonna have an entire pillowcase of candy oh my god i'm just gonna murder myself yeah because right they're they're just going to be super hyper and then they're going to get sick and you're going to have to deal with it yeah and side. then they could eat razor blades <laughs> oh god and then uh you know i i think in the coming in the coming weeks maybe i'll do a segment on how people are turning our kids into huge pussies yeah i really want to razor talk blades about that. into I, candy i, I think halloween probably. is dying for kids though because I, I talked to my it brother is. and he has uh his uh three kids two one's like nine and one's like five and he says he used to go where we used to go trick or treating when I was a kid, and there's like no one out there. When it gets dark, everyone just leaves. Yeah, they're like, all what? afraid of rapists. Are you serious? And shit. Yeah, they they stop at like back where I'm from in, in Waverly, New York. They stop at like seven thirty at That's night. That's insane. I mean, we would yeah. go to like nine o'clock at night every time, man. Shit, when I was a kid in California, which was way more oh, dangerous, it was fucking super Waverly. Super late. Yeah, well, I'm a, a little older than you guys. It was like ten. Yeah, I used to eleven. Live, yeah, I lived in an yeah. old people neighborhood so they would go to sleep by like nine so oh yeah well we lived out in the country so yeah. it was hours it would be hours and hours also, to get to every house so you'd yeah. go forever you'd i guess like three or four hours you'd be out yeah. there at least 20 percent of your candy is fucking tootsie rolls and tootsie pops who the fuck is giving this shit away stop yeah. no no Cheapos. kid wants that That's, fuck yeah. you no if you buy a big bag of candy it costs the same for tootsie rolls than it does for like you know Anything else? At least buy Reese's. some fun size Snickers or some shit. Yeah. Something that tastes awesome. good. I don't want. I don't want goddamn Tootsie Rolls. No one wants that. Dude, I should just. We we'll just throw that shit all. Oh, Dude, fuck that. No candy corn. Can't. Oh, candy corn. That's disgusting. I think people Dude, know that's gross. <laughs> yeah, I think they buy it to be an asshole. They're like, yeah. you fuck you kids. Also, when you're a kid, you're just out there in the middle of the night with no parents, just doing whatever the fuck you want with other kids. That's that's the other fun part. Did you ever I have actually, someone that gave out toothbrushes? I had that no. one. I had have a seen that before. Or the, someone who give out apples. Pennies. Yeah, apples. So we had like, apples. I've had apple yeah, candy that. corn, though. I, I'm not going to eat it. Fuck would, that. But I, you know, I like apples, but I, just, I don't want an apple on Halloween. That's not what you give out. We had the apple guy, and everyone who got the apple just threw it at his house. <laughs> <an apple or so. laughs> yeah, so you're asking for so it. So stupid, you're yeah. You don't, you don't give away something like that or like pennies and stuff. That's another thing people are going to throw. No. That is That's stupid. Also, you know, dressing up as a kid is a little, actually almost more fun because you get these onesie outfits. I used to have a Captain Planet onesie outfit and oh, stuff. Oh, it's twice as fun because you don't pay for your Yeah, costume. also, yeah. kids have more competition. Like, oh, you got Darth Vader, I'm Yoda. Ooh, people just argue about who's the best nonstop, so. That did happen a lot. Yeah, yeah. it did. Um, fun times. I got to say, uh, before we move on, I, I, I do agree. Halloween is definitely my favorite holiday, and I, I've been saying that for years, and I have people sometimes argue with me, like, and they'll be like, no, Christmas. And I'm like, oh, Christmas, Christmas is a sucks shit. a lot more. Once as you're an, an adult, adult. Christmas as a kid once is, you're an adult, Christmas as a kid is number one, but as an adult. Oh. Yeah, Christmas is the best as a kid, but it's just because you get stuff. It's not because of the holiday. Christmas oh, yeah. itself sucks when you're a kid. It's just getting the stuff. 
And then afternoon, it's terrible because you have to spend the day with your family. You can't even use the shit <laughs> yeah. that you got. Yep. It's terrible. See, yeah, day I, after Christmas, Christmas rules. Christmas but. is way different in my family. It's 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 bad news. Like there's 50 people there. They're all really? drinking Jeez. a shit ton, and they are just eating. It was kind of like that with my shit. family, but you would never be able to use the stuff you got. No, it's no just it's true. Buying shit for other people so they can buy stuff for you that you don't want. I'm like, yay. Yeah, I, I, I don't like Christmas at all yeah, now. I, I, I don't, I don't like, like it. Really. it. I, I like it if I'm back home. It's still fun because we drink and stuff. But and I've had some of my best memories were from Christmas. Like I was a teenager. Uh, my my cousin brought over Goldeneye. We played it for 14 hours straight. I think there's a big divide <laughs> between people who are really broke and people who are like have a little bit of money for Christmas. Because like mm. if you have a little bit, you can buy presents for people, and then you just like yeah. yeah, whatever Christmas. You don't really care either way. If you're broke, you're like, this is the worst holiday. I, I don't, I, I people don't, expect so much of you. I don't like the gift part anymore as an adult. I don't like buying them. I don't like receiving them because they're like, hey, what do you want? It's like, I have what I want. I just yeah. fucking buy it so now. They, exactly. So they buy you something useless because then you kidding. have to buy them something too. It's like, yeah. oh, fuck. That's why I go with my brothers. Hey, don't buy me anything. I won't buy that, you anything. My brothers and I have the same pack. We don't buy anything for each other. But then they have fucking little nephews and nieces. And yep, things. exactly. Yeah. Shit. Oh, that's don't have any kids, yo. That's easy to buy for, though. So, yeah, I, mean, I just give them money. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's Halloween. Good day. Dress Halloween. up as something good. Get, yeah. Get drunk. Yeah. I, it's too bad that this um, is going out, to, the podcast going up tomorrow. I would like Halloween's to actually on Monday, so that's all right. Well, that's true. People could send us some stuff about yeah. Halloween. Send yeah. us your Halloween pictures and or that's a good information. Idea. Well, I'll be in Hawaii, something. so I don't give a shit. Oh, uh, fuck you. Yeah, fuck off. So, movie time. So, um, let's go over the movie. We, we didn't uh, have a podcast last week, so we didn't talk about the movies that were coming out. But I got the list of what they were going to predict it to make. So, we got uh, Puss in Boots, number one, 37 million. Of course. Paranormal, right. Paranormal Activity 3, 20 million, number two. And In Time, that Justin Timberlake movie, 13 million, number three. Yeah, it's not a movie's not getting good reviews. I had multiple people on Facebook who I knew from high school post about how they were excited to watch Pussy Boots. Oh. Pussy Boots. Yeah. <laughs> Just call it that, Pussy Boots. That's yeah. what I've been calling it. I gotta say, Shrek is... I don't like Shrek that much. And no. two, three, four, whatever the numbers they are, are fucking garbage. Yeah, they're, they're, they're I, 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 don't, I don't even want to know what this well, shit's gonna be. The first time I watched the original Shrek, I was like, this is pretty... It's an alright movie. It's kind of funny. And it's not really badly made. I kind of liked it, but I watched it again later, and I was like, oh, it's, no, you it's definitely you a, one, second time it's a yeah. one-time movie. And, and the other thing about it is, like, this, you're right, the sequels are oh. god-awful, so I can There's only so imagine. This is like a spin-off, so it must be even worse. It's like all references to, like, old for- folklore and songs and shit like that. It's like, there's... Yeah, the original, the original worked because it was... It, it used the big ones that are, like, famous, yeah. and... And it, they ran out. Yeah, basically, <laughs> they had to, like, pick... They had to just pick, pick and choose little shit that just, um, uh, terrible. This is actually supposed to be like a heist movie, so oh god. So it's yeah. uh, I actually think that it, while it's still probably awful, it's still better than Shrek Forever After, which is just like we don't have we don't even have a plot. We just fucking made. Oh this. yeah, they just wanted to make money on Speaking it. Speaking of heists, movies that are coming out this week: Tower Heist, <laughs> yay. Harold and Kumar 3D Christmas. Oh, that's coming yeah. out. Fuck. Yeah, that's talk. About I didn't know it was coming out this soon. Talk it's about milk in a franchise. Overrated right there. movies. Oh, people, lo- people love the first Harold. Uh, they I do. Saw in theaters. That movie sucks. Yeah, I know. But dude, Tiger Escape from was. Guantanamo Bay is a million Not times it. worse. Yeah. So, so I gotta say, I saw a Real Steel last night. Finally, I was excited to watch it. This movie is fucking garbage. Is that awful? It's, I think it's one of the biggest disappointments of my life because it's this is one of the mu- the mushiest movies I've ever fucking seen. Yeah, it's a family movie. It's like you probably should ask. This me is that, more huh? of a chick flick than a fucking <laughs> robot fight. I was yeah. like excited for some stupid bullshit, crazy '80s style stuff, but nope. It's all about kid crying. Yeah, girl crying. Movie. Like, oh my god, fuck this shit. It's it's garbage. It's I will. This is a movie where someone will see it and they'll never remember it. What's the There's Alex? Nothing memorable. What's the Alex uh, rating out of ten? Well, for entertainment, two. <laughs> this is overall, though. Over, I, I mean, it's not. It's, it's, it's not, not a badly made. Bet. It's not a badly made movie. It's just, I'm so disappointed that I can't even give it a score. So it's just uh, I can't give it a legitimate yeah. score. Yeah, it's like a five, I guess. I don't know. Fair enough. 
I, I didn't think it looked good well, at all. Made so. a profit, so who cares? Worldwide. They'll Worldwide, once again, saves people's asses. Great. Thanks. It wasn't going to make a profit here anyway. How much does that cost? It cost $130 million. Whoa, expensive. holy yeah. shit. And expensive. it's made like 80 here. Really? But... It made 150 million worldwide already. So <laughs> even with marketing, they're gonna make a profit. So kill yourself. That's yeah, it's what you're fucking wow. shit. I can't remember. This is like a cost. Fuck you, people. Like I said, when that movie went number one, fuck you. That movie looks stupid. Hey, Dolphin Tail went number one. Way worse. Well, all right. Yes. Let's let's do the top. Five. I'm sick of these top five. real steel shit. I don't want to talk about that movie. Okay, so top five. Number five. I had no idea this was coming out, but don't we have uh, number six? Bonus, dude. Some bonus. <laughs> I'm saving that one for last because it's so good. Damn! All right, we'll save it for last. Uh, number five, Blackwater the video game has been released. Yes. Now, uh, did not get very good reviews. Uh, got two and a half from IGN, who was pretty lenient. <laughs> Are you as shocked as I am? No. Yeah. That yes. Blackwater video game didn't didn't, didn't All, wasn't a chart topper. Also, I'm gonna blow your mind. The story in it is very. Brown, dirty people versus awesome Americans. Oh, you know, of course. I Why know, not? Right? Blackwater story. Um, also, Based on a true story. Also, you do get to gun down civilians yes. and laugh. And then also have sex with hookers on American money. <laughs> No, actually, you don't get to do that. So. <laughs> the reason why is because it was actually co-financed by Blackwater. Right. Who actually is no longer Z. They went back to Blackwater. Really? Yeah. I, I found their site. They went, we are now again Blackwater. Probably because Obama gave them immunity. Yay! But why would they, uh, why would they go back to it anyway, though? Because it has such bad connotations. No, it? they're badass. That's why. People know it. All right. Yeah. Number four. Number four, yeah. Don't buy that game. You won't. Oh, I want to say one other thing about the game. Connect functionality. Oh, oh yeah. Number four. So that's really yeah, why it's in the top five. That's... <laughs> oh, it's got to be terrible. So, uh, number four, 1,800 years of illegal parking. <laughs> so, this car received a $44,500 500, uh, $44, ticket for 1,800 years of illegal parking. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Um, this was obviously a computer glitch, but... Or a typo. Or a typo, but at the same time, someone... This is in Italy, by the way. Uh, someone had to look at this ticket and put it on their car. <laughs> yeah, we... I mean... And went, oh yeah, this is good. So this was in Italy. This is in Italy, okay. yeah. What, what kind of shit-ass bureaucrats do they have there? Cause it, I mean, uh, ones that have sex with lots of hookers. Yeah, well, you know. Berlusconi. Dude, if you saw that ticket, I would probably just rip it up. I'm like, ah, oh, this can't be real. Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah, what is this? Some kids, Someone's obviously some kids doing fucking a with me. Yeah, <laughs> you get one the next month. It's for fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> I would just ask, late fee. I would ask Sally Mae for another loan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the parking ticket. Maybe it, maybe it'd get excused. <laughs> yeah. Twenty years. <laughs> Twenty years. Yeah, I'd get forgiven. That, awesome. I'm sure that Rasmussen poll would be very, <laughs> very fair. Um, so, anyways, I we just have a really someone someone looked at that ticket and went yeah. Then they had to call up and be like, I think this ticket's wrong, and then they probably like hassled them like, No, you did something wrong. Like, <laughs> no, you've got to pay this because <laughs> you've like, no. No, no. He went back in time with the Terra Nova portal with his car <laughs> and then left it in that spot. That's and society 80. built themselves around the car. <laughs> it's got its own tomb. <laughs> Like built, it's like underground now. No, <laughs> yeah, in Italy, the T Rex is still spawn camping. So it's like, <laughs> spawn yeah. camping. So number three, this is Alex's. I think it's a good one though. Non organ donors. All right, so this is the this is like the only thing in my in my entire life that actually makes me legitimately pissed off about people. If someone says they don't want to be an organ donor, I actually fucking hate you and I don't want to talk to you. If you say, oh, I like Dancing with the Stars, I'm like, okay, you're an idiot, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I like, I don't know, fucking Harold and Kumar movies. Yeah, whatever. They're stupid, whatever. He's like, I don't want to donate my organs. I'm like, are you fucking serious? How much of a fucking asshole are you? You're going to get buried <laughs> underground. You don't need that shit anymore. There's people waiting on waiting lists that are going to fucking die. Yeah. yeah. That need it. Well, the one thing I said Arms to you that hungry. I was saying is that some people... May have weird religious. Doesn't matter. For Fuck it. you. Doesn't matter. You're fucking dead. Your religion is a piece of shit. Then if you're not going to give well, your dead organs to someone to help them live. But again, you. you're yelling at me when I'm saying that. 
Oh, I no, think I'm, all I'm, religions, I'm yelling, looking I think at all you, religions I'm not yelling are at you. a piece of shit anyway, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Like, no, no, I, I've actually known people that said, no, I just, I just want them in me. And like, someone told me that she was going to be cremated and she wanted them in. I'm like, I wanted that's, to punch her in the face. I actually that's wanted way worse. to worse. What is your problem? Maybe she thought there wouldn't be enough ashes. She's what, like, we need, I need those to make the, the density of the ashes a little yeah, stronger. If, if I died like tomorrow, you guys could just do whatever the fuck. You just donate me to science for money. You just chop or me up and like, fake you. video. Oh, like, I, I don't I, fucking care, I'd man. I'd eat you. Yeah. I'd chop you up and eat you. Go because for it. But not the organs. Just make a video the, of it. Oh, too. no. Yeah, gotta, oh, yeah. Those. Just get my organs away first. So, yeah. Make sure you do that. Uh, um, you can keep a skull, my skull on your wall or something like that. Yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty shit way to be to just refuse to give that your is, that is bullshit dead body to people who need it to live. That's it's like, nah, fuck you. You don't need it. Get out of here. You're fucking dead. Oh my god. <laughs> so, uh, number two, um, Assemblyman Brian Jones. So this guy's in San Diego County. He's a Republican. Um, you know, there's a lot of immigrants in, uh, yes. uh, as I was like to call them, brown people in the California area. <laughs> and uh, even though he's not, he doesn't maybe know this, actually, we are actually losing immigrants because they aren't coming to our country anymore. Fun fact. Uh, uh, he still finds this to be a big problem, you know. And, and there is a legitimate argument because a lot of our prison prisons are filled with minorities. So... This costs money, right? Yeah. So that's it's a, that's also partly just because the legal of how system. laws are written. Yeah. Your dime, you have a dime bag. Twenty years in prison. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, um, this guy, he has an idea to fix this. His idea is, yo, if you're some dirty immigrant, we always have to put you in our prisons. But here's my idea: let's build prisons in the foreign country that they're from. And then they can pay to have them be housed there. Yeah, that's what we're talking Discuss. about. Discuss. So I think that there's a very, a very uh, big flaw in this plan, <laughs> which is that um, one, uh, uh, the country would just say no. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, there's an issue. No, they would say yes. With, Here's some money. Yeah. Well, that's the one you think you can do. That's the do. flaw. You yeah. have to pay them. Well, you have to pay them a lot. But uh, I want to <laughs> use an example. Guantanamo Bay. Remember, Obama was like, we're going to close this down. Yeah. Well, when you illegally seize people and throw them in a prison from the, another country, where do you put them? So they start calling up the country they're Super from nice. and they go, <laughs> they, they call up the country they're from and they go, hey, uh, do you want to take back this prisoner? And guess what they did every time? They said, no, they're, you said they were a terrorist. I don't want them. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, drats. <laughs> You know, like, this is the same thing. Well, it was worth a shot, though. It was worth, you know, <laughs> so punter, good, punter's good, chance. What, was, what is his purpose of this? Why, does it just not... It does not save money. I don't know. It's, uh, it <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like, what is it going to help? Well, I think what he believes, I think this guy, just honestly... wants them back in their country? N- no. Well, oh, yes, this is great. I, you don't like it I, here, I didn't read this quote. This is great. I it's think what this guy believes, maybe I'm wrong, but I think maybe he believes that they're going to pay for this. Like, they'll foot the bill somehow. No, he knows that they have to pay for part of it at least. Okay. Now, now it's probably going to be shared responsibility, it sounds like. But listen to this. This is a quote from him. They'll operate at a lot lower expense than being here in California. He's just saying that the prisons are shittier there and they have less yeah. legal shit. So they'll have shit. less so, human rights issues. Yeah. So that's, that's So he why. just fucking hates prisoners. Yeah, he, he hates prisoners and he hates immigrants. Yeah. So, so he's just a racist fuck. You don't like it here? Get out. Yeah, that's, that is Get that. out of our home, but be sure to pick some fruit on the way out. And also, <laughs> leave cook it our, these, cook leave it our Applebee's baskets. food. Don't bring that fruit back through California, though. Yeah, fruit flies, yo. <laughs> uh, um, so, number one. I can't believe I'm even reading this We're going to go over. Oh, that's, that's fine. fine. Whatever. Juggalos on FBI National Gang Threat Assessment <laughs> List. Yes. So, the FBI wrote this. It's like 50 pages about various <laughs> oh gangs. My God. And this was on Gawker, but I actually will have the link to the actual document. This document is hilarious in general. But on page 21, it, you, you see it. They have all these lists of gangs, you know, like Los Zetas, like Asian informal gangs. Informal gangs and stuff, too. Yeah. So under non-traditional gangs, the first one listed, 
Juggalos. It was the first one? Yeah. Damn. Because there aren't any non-traditional games. All the other ones are race-based, so it's like... Right. Th- those are considered traditional. <laughs> That's a traditional <laughs> gang. <laughs> yeah. What so, about Our Gang? Was that on there? Our Gang. It's a good movie. Was no. that a show? Yes, it was a show. Uh, the movie it. was Little Rascals. Yeah. It's a, oh, racist. <laughs> anyway, so this is what they wrote about Juggalos. The Juggalos, a loosely organized hybrid gang, are rapidly expanding into many U.S. communities, although recognized as a gang in only four states. What's By the way, Arizona is one of them. Wow. They're recognized many, as a gang here? Many, what? Many Juggalos subsets ex- exhibit gang-like behavior and engage in criminal activity and violence, like... Yelling at people, like smoking <laughs> weed, and drinking uh, publicly for locos. Probably, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, juggalos. I can imagine for locos, juggalos yeah. liking for locos. That seems pretty accurate. Mo- this is great. Most crimes committed by juggalos are sporadic, disorganized, individualistic, and often involve simple assault. Oh, per- so they're not a gang drug at all. Use and possession, petty theft, and vandalism. That makes Whoa! them. That makes them not a gang because <laughs> all they just said basically all the crimes committed by them are individualistic crimes based on the person who committed it, not gang related. <laughs> oh my god, I never read this before. However, open source reporting suggests what is that? <laughs> what? what is I, I I saw a juggalo. Yeah, ask of people on the street. That's open source. <laughs> it's that supported is, by GNU. A, a small number of juggalos are forming more organized subsets, and engaging more game-like criminal activity, such as felony assaults, thefts, robberies, and drug sales. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, yeah, it is great. I mean, you should just read the whole thing, and then they have a picture of it. Of a juggler, like a figure, almost like there's <laughs> a woman oh, holding man. a gun. Yeah, put that it's like in the show Joker's notes, henchman definitely. or something. Put that in the Dude, show notes. It's so great. That thing's fantastic. And then this is this is their this is their case. One of the cases they want. They always show like a violent case. And the other ones are like they killed three other rival gang <laughs> yeah. members. Some this one in January 2010. Two suspected juggalo associates were charged with beating and robbing an elderly homeless man. That's the only one listed. Right, right, <laughs> the yeah, only yeah. one. Homeless That's man. It. Oh no. <laughs> the arm- so bad. Number one gang. Man, I'm scared. Non traditional. Number one non traditional. So, what's gang. our bonus? Bonus. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever mention. thought I was going to say the FBI list thing in my life, this, this beats it somehow. Yeah. God damn it, Gawker. Man caught having sex with donkey claimed it was a shape-shifting hooker. <laughs> this this is the reason this guy's not in the top five. Because I love this guy. I, I love him. Okay, so this is what well, we got to think about. Was he just trying to make him an excuse like Mike Tyson eating uh, Holyfield's ear? Or okay. is he just like insane okay, on some so, drugs? Just, oh, he probably, had, he probably had a lot of drugs. So here's the background. A Zimbabwe man was busted on Sunday at 4 a.m. penetrating a donkey tied to a tree in his backyard with his penis. The man, 28-year-old Sunday Moyo, admitted to the court that it indeed must have looked bad, but hear him out because only a few hours earlier, the donkey was a human prostitute. (laughs) Your worship, I only came to know that I was being intimate with the donkey when I got arrested. I had hired a prostitute and paid U.S. $20 for the service (laughs) at Downtown Nightclub and I don't know how she became a donkey. <laughs> At a downtown nightclub? According to the Herald. In Zimbabwe? They should audit him and see if the 20 bucks are missing. This, oh my god! Okay, I did not read this before. According to the Herald, he also claimed he was in love. I think I am also a donkey. I do not know what happened when <laughs> I left the bar, but I'm seriously in love with that donkey. Maybe donkeys Dude, this guy is see each other super. as like people, so they can't tell. So maybe you know, he thought that it was a hooker. It's really a donkey. But he's also a donkey, so he didn't know. Nah, it's just because donkeys have a good sense of I'm, humor. I'm just glad we got. <laughs> I, I'm glad we came full circle on Shrek references here with donkeys and stuff. So it's yeah, good. Um, that guy is ridiculous, dude. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Dude, lies build on top of lies, man. You, you don't think he actually believes this stuff? No, I think he does actually. I think he was on drugs. He, he, well, maybe he came from a bar. Who knows what he was taking for that too? I think he's on drugs. Because yeah. if you weren't on drugs, you wouldn't come up with an excuse that stupid. Yeah, but why would he say after that, though? He's not on drugs when he's in court later on, probably. He paid US $20. Think. Yeah, <laughs> and now he is in love with that donkey, and he feels that he's a donkey, well, too. That's what I'm saying. He came up with that excuse. Oh, I got you. I think he believes it. I think he's just on drugs. Dude, this is a long order has mental episode. issues. 
Yeah. All right, so uh, that's whatever. the podcast, episode that, 25. Welcome to Earth. <laughs> Here's the... So if you want to send us an email, t- podcast at tipping40s.com or a voicemail at 218-666-8407. Thanks for listening. And Sunday, Moyo, you can crash on our couch anytime. See you next week. All right, bye. Booyah!